Hi everyone, and welcome to this tutorial about transcoding Nikon RAW footage and why PlayPro Studio is the best tool to work with this particular format, as it allows for a few things that other tools won't. In this video, we'll be using PlayPro Studio, which serves as a simple to use player and transcoder. However, we have the same file format support in Scratch and our DIT package, which on top allows to create OpenXR sequences with frame based metadata for VFX departments. Now, let me show you how to import and transcode Nikon RAW footage in PlayPro Studio. I'll start with an empty project and simply import all of my clips via the Import Clips menu. The first thing I want to highlight is all the clip metadata that PlayPro Studio reads from the source footage. Simply swipe up the metadata stack over here and take a look. Quite a lot of information here. All this information will be forwarded to the ProRes files we will render out, but we can also export all of it as either a PDF report or as an ALA file if we want to import the metadata into any third-party app that does not read the metadata from the original Nikon RAW files. To export a report, simply call up the report generator and select your report type. I'll go with Clip Metadata. Now we can first tell PlayPro Studio whether to export just the current timeline, a selection of shots, or an entire group or project. Next, we can set a logo we want to have appear on the report, and we can also tell where in the clip to pull the little thumbnail from. 0% means it will be the first frame of each clip, 100% will be the last frame, and anything in between will be a frame from throughout the clip. Over here, we can select the metadata columns that we want to include in our report. Let me just command select all of them and add them to the selection. Done. Once we hit OK, we can choose whether we want to export as HTML or PDF. I'll go with PDF. Here we are. All our extended metadata shows up. As you can see, the header part of the report is empty. To fill this with information, simply go to the metadata tab up here and fill it in prior to exporting the report. But back to our footage. Let me show you why PlayPro Studio supports this format better than anything else and jump into the player tab. Just so you know the two most important hotkeys in here, Alt and drag up and down for zooming and space drag for panning the image around in the viewport. Let me also bring up the scopes from the top menu bar. Down here we have the six main menus of the player. The first is the NRAW menu, which holds all the decoding and debayering parameters. As you can see, we have the usual suspects being exposure, saturation, Kelvin and tint. However, these values are not necessarily static. They could actually have changed during recording. PlayPro Studio supports dynamic debayering parameters with Nikon RAW. Of course, we can also just set a value for any of the parameters and PlayPro Studio will then switch the mode and simply leave them as they are. Next, I want to show you these three features over here on the right. PlayPro Studio of course debayers the raw data in full floating point. However, with extreme highlights, not all photo sites of a camera sensor clip at the same level. Some might still capture information, while others are already clipping. In most cases, this might result in noticeably colored or simply clipped highlights. To restore these, we have implemented the highlight recovery, which can this way reveal a great deal of highlight information. Next, we have distortion correction. Nikon RAW actually ships with lens distortion metadata, which PlayPro Studio can read out and apply. The impact on the image can be quite big, as you can see here. Lastly, Nikon RAW also stores lens vignette information and of course, PlayPro Studio also reads out that kind of metadata and can apply it to compensate vignetting of the lens towards the edges. All these options really give a much cleaner and more neutral image, which in many cases will work better in post or VFX in particular. Now that we have set these parameters on the first clip of our timeline, we can simply copy those settings over to all other clips. Simply hit copy over here and right away hit paste. A little menu will pop up asking you what to paste. In our case, we just want the node controls. We can alt click to automatically deselect all other parameters. But since we did not touch anything else, it would also not matter if they stayed selected. 
Next, instead of just pasting the properties, we click Paste Forward. Play Pro Studio will now paste everything forward to all clips on the timeline. Remember to confirm twice. And done. We can now go through our timeline and do some QC on our footage if necessary, grade it if wanted, or shorten down certain clips using the AV trim menu if required. But we wanted to transcode our footage, so let's go back to the Construct tab and hit the Render button. This menu is pretty straightforward. First, we select the entire timeline to render. Next, we select Same as Source because we want to render each clip in its native resolution, frame rate, and aspect. Play Pro Studio offers to render out H.264 and H.265 in up to 12 bit as well as Apple ProRes, also on Windows. Since we're dealing with quite a high resolution, let's go for ProRes 4x4XQ. Next are the audio channels to include. I will just select Auto here and Play Pro Studio will always include the correct number of audio channels per clip. I will also retain the 24 bit of the original audio. Lastly, we need to set the render path and enable the Use Source Name option, so our rendered ProRes files will have the exact same file name as the original Nikon RAW files. The Unique Files option is only required if you happen to have the same source shot twice in your timeline. Hit OK and Play Pro Studio will start rendering. You can monitor the process here in the render queue. Done. Let's re-import the ProRes clips we just rendered and compare to the originals. For this, it's important that you set this blue bar down here onto the first slot, as that is where Play Pro Studio will insert the new clips as a version. Here we go. As you can see, all ProRes clips have been loaded as versions on top of the original Nikon RAW files. Checking the metadata stack, we can confirm that all the extended metadata has made it safely over to the ProRes files. If we jump into the Player tab and bring up the version stack, we can switch back and forth between the Nikon RAW and ProRes file using page up and down hotkeys. And not only compare the image itself, but also check the waveform in the scopes. Perfect. Note that you can also select dual or split view here or via hotkeys S and D. When in split or dual view, you can simply drag the version that you're currently not viewing into the right side of the viewport and compare to the current clip this way. If we now want to delete the imported clips from our project again, we can simply hit Ctrl or Command 2 to select the second row of clips and then hit the delete button. This will only delete the clips from inside Play Pro Studio, but not from disk. That's it for now, I hope you enjoyed this video and see you next time. Bye!